and welcome to the Sydney St. James Show. Hi, we're back now with episode four, The Making of Genesis. Imagine stepping onto the shore and finding its heaven. In my previous podcast, in episode three, which was book three of the Faith Chronicles, Faith 70 times seven, I asked many times why the Lord stood so far away every time that my grandmother asked for forgiveness for an abusive husband. I wondered why the Lord always hid himself in times of trouble. After the first three books in the series, I learned that I needed to read the Bible from start to finish. Now, I don't know how many times or any of you out there have read the Bible from start to finish, but it's not easy. And a lot of the scriptures are very difficult to understand. And when you get to them, you stop, you back up, you read it again, and you still don't understand. So it's not easy reading the Bible. But I did exactly that and took many notes. In book four, Genesis the one that we're talking about today, and the next one, which is book five, Hallelujah, are both prequels to the final book in the Faith Chronicles, Seeing the Power of God. In the Faith Chronicles series, final sixth novel, I answer the all-important question, do you have to believe in the Bible to be a Christian? Ah, I'm not answering that for you right now, but I will answer that for you in my sixth episode, The Making of Seeing the Power of God. However, back to the one we're talking about today, Genesis. Genesis, in simple terms, is a story of the Old Testament. Let me ask you this. Have you ever read your Bible and just stop in the middle of a phrase or scripture? Then you find yourself going back to the beginning of that scripture and rereading it again. Do you ever find that there's just no wow, no impact, no overwhelming thought that just strikes you because it is so hard to understand sometimes? For years, I was an elder in the First Presbyterian Church in Eagle Lake, Texas, but I don't profess whatsoever. <laughs> to be an ordained minister. So, you're not alone. I, I ran into the same problem when I was doing all the different scriptures and working up all the sermons for my grandmother Ada when I was writing the book Faith 70 times 7. You know, memories growing up with my grandmother, the Reverend Ada Slayton Bonds, shed complete light on so many books of the Bible. She was a great storyteller, just like Jesus was when he spread the word of God in parables, be it Easter, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, or even Thanksgiving. She always had a story to tell and practiced her Sunday morning sermons, preaching her discourse to my brothers, Daryl and Warren, and me, just outside of Mansfield, Louisiana. The outlines to so many sermons were found in these Red Chief notebooks mentioned in my last podcast in episode three. Each time I worked on a different sermon, I turned to the Old Testament and read the scriptures, usually the entire chapters from what Reverend Ada Slayton Bonds prepared for her Sunday morning service. So much so that when I finished with faith 70 times 7, I took my trusty family tree maker software and started out with Adam and Eve. You'll find that many of my novels in the Gideon Detective series, the Love Lost series, and in other series that I've written bases the mysteries in the novels on family histories. And in book four, Genesis, I did just that. 
For those who have followed my blog sites and my podcast sites and some of my live broadcast on Facebook, you will already know that I am a professional genealogist and have been so for over 30 to 40 years. So I really enjoy putting the pieces of a family's puzzle together. So I did that when I took off with Genesis. But after three or four weeks, I realized trying to keep up with the who's who of the Bible and of all things, how did the Adam and Eve family begin the world's population? Well, this podcast doesn't have enough time for me to answer that question, but no longer do you or your children in this book, Genesis, have to read the Bible until something hits you, makes sense to you. Book four in the Faith Chronicles portrays a fresh approach to the scriptures. Down-to-earth storytelling of God's words beginning with, well, the beginning. The book of Genesis writings has something been referred to as the entire Bible seed plot As complicated as it might seem in scripture form, most of the central doctrines of the Bible are introduced to all of us in this so-called seed form in this book. Along with the fall of mankind, God's promise of salvation and redemption are put in plain words in this fourth novel of the Faith Chronicles. The doctrines of creation the accusation of sin, justification, grace, faith, and much more are all addressed in this fourth book of the Faith Chronicles, Genesis. Almost all my life, Genesis was best explained to me in the form of a 1956 movie, Cecil B. the Mills, The Ten Commandments. There's a saying today, don't always believe what you read on the internet or what you see on the silver screen. Hollywood told the story of Genesis, but as they always do, with a flair for capturing moviegoers' attention, it was the highest grossing film of the 1950s, and it was the seventh highest grossing film of all time. By the way, it's also been one of my most favorite movies of all time. Furthermore, I must mention it, a relative of mine was nominated for an Academy Award in 1932, Carl Struess, for cinematography. So, this fourth novel in the series, as I said, captures that first book of the Bible, Genesis, and it tells the story of the beginning in straightforward and easy-to-understand stories. Where did we come from? Have you heard about Anchor.fm by Spotify? It's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Yep, Anchor has the tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Why are we here? Where are we going? Genesis, no doubt, appears to the theologian, the historian, the scientist, the housewife, the farmer, and the man or woman of God himself. All in all, it is a fitting beginning for God's story of his plan for mankind and an appropriate opening for the fourth book in the series and the first of two books that are the two prequels to Seeing the Power of God by Sidney St. James. I often think about my return back to Mansfield, Louisiana. I don't know. If everybody knows where Mansfield is, but it's up in North Louisiana. But the town that is the closest to where all my early upbringing was, 
was a small little crossroad town, population 12, known as Evelyn, Louisiana. That's where my mother was born. I often think about this area in Louisiana, and when I do, my mind shoots back to that time again. What a happy time it was with my grandmother. It was a spring day, the kind where my brothers and I and cousins Jackie, Bubba, Robbie Jean, Lexine, and Linda were so glad to run in the front yard playing softball without our jackets. We young kids were all smiles. If we stopped to make a necklace of china berries, we choose the prettiest ones for our string. I still remember staring at my two cousins, thinking I would marry one of them one day. We indeed made our moments back then, happy so that they came together to form such a unique memory under the sun. You know, it's kind of funny sometimes when when you do podcasts and you're speaking from your heart and you're talking about things, how you can get running along and all of a sudden certain memories that you haven't thought of in many years just pop in your mind. One such memory was my swinging on the swings uh, that my our Pop Nelson, he's our grandfather, uh, built. With my almost eight-year-old legs, I still remember pumping higher and higher. I tried to go as high as my big brother Daryl did, who was 13. I didn't do too good a job of it. Uh, and I guess the only reason I was doing it, and of course you had to have been there to see it, I was showing off in the front yard for Linda, my cousin. I can't quite put my finger on the total memory, but I can still see that day. Well, anyhow, while feeling the hair flop backward as my face felt the warm sunlight and I was facing the ground on the rearward swing, I fell. Wham! I hit that ground so hard, I still remember that. I laid there. I wasn't able to breathe. The wind was knocked out of me. I could barely run, finding it hard to catch my breath. And I fell down at the front door of my grandma's house. She rushed to the door and opened it while I laid on a rubber mat, still trying to inhale. She looked down at me, but was remaining calm and had me carried to her bed. I was beginning to breathe better and still remember her gentle hands passing through my long brown hair. I watched as a gentle smile crossed her face. My grandmother knew just how to make one feel better. She brought out a t-shirt she had been saving for my birthday, blue and gold, with large letters on the front, LSU. I forgot the fall right away, staring at the beautiful shirt of her favorite football team. My tears were already drying. I kept that t-shirt for many, many years. Hanging there next to my Eagle Lake High School football jackets, number 62, in the closet. Well, dwelling on these past memories of our grandmothers is something I'm sure we all do. I still have a picture of that softball game that I talked to you about earlier. Its color is now lost with age, and it sits in a cigar box in my closet. I remember those times I would sit in her bedroom with her and watch the brush slide through her salt and pepper hair that reached way down past her waist. Sort of funny sometimes how these memories just stick with us for a lifetime. I was mesmerized by her rational expressions and her laughter lines from her gift for smiling so effortlessly. Her personality could be seen in all those creases, and I still remember one time she jumped up from her nightstand, told me to stay right where I was, and shuffled off to the refrigerator and rummaged through the shelves, and she came back with two chocolate eclairs she had made earlier in the day. Oh, I could still taste those rascals. Yummy. Or 
sitting down at the breakfast table in the morning to a pile of twelve pancakes high on my ceramic plate with the melting butter we had churned in a small outbuilding earlier in the days by the stables. And then, that's the most important things as far as Genesis was concerned, there are the Bible stories, the ones my grandmother would tell me when I was yet to become a teenager. One would have to have known the Reverend Mrs. Ada Slayton Bonds to understand one would never meet a better storyteller than she was. Not even me, Sidney St. James. Of course, I'm only choking with you there. But anyhow, this novel, Genesis, searched back to several of those remarkable stories she told us every time we would visit her home place between Mansfield, Louisiana, and Evelyn on Easter, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, I think instead of crying, each story she presented to me brought a smile to my face. I still remember her telling those stories, and yes, even made me laugh as I remembered them while dusting off the scriptures of my King James Version of the Bible during the writing of this book. In writing these stories, it is my aim that our children of today may read and love them as much as I did listening to them when I was but an eight-year-old boy outside of Evelyn, Louisiana. The Old Testament, where Genesis was written, and the New Testament, where Jesus comes and goes, are a treasure of parables. Each one is vivid and full of charm. Each tale has a hero and or a heroine whose feats of valor, their sacrifices of love, and their faith in the Lord stimulates us all. The stories told by my grandmother have been placed in order as they appear in the Bible. Some of her sermons found on the red-colored chief notebook paper in outline form have been expanded and incorporated into these writings for one's reading enjoyment. I have presented in this first novel of the two novels, the Old Testament and the New Testament, both of them written in creative historical nonfiction style, stories which will fascinate the children and older folks like us too. These stories, once again, were told to me by my grandma Ada, as she was known, were drawn from the one book that never goes out of print and never fails to carry a divine message. King James Version of the Bible. Oh, and yes, one last quote from some notes out of my grandmother's 1939 Red Chief Dog Ear Notebook, and they're written down kind of at an angle on the bottom right-hand side of a page. They say, God is love. Love is God. He is my breath, my serenity, and my companion, Miss Ada. Then, in parables, the stories begin with the making of Genesis, the beginning. Well, I've hoped you enjoyed the making of Genesis. Imagine stepping onto the shore and finding that it's heaven. That wraps it up for me today. And once again, as always, I sure thank you for dropping in from a podcast. And I hope to hear from all my listeners at any time. Happy listening. This book is appropriate for children 12 years of age and older. Find Sydney St. James on Facebook and Instagram.